Well, hello and welcome. You are watching Jim and Esme. We're back into From the Depth. Or, or now we're actually on Dry Designer Platform. But today we're going to talk about APS. The nice kinetic shells. And I've changed to the droid. Yes, instead of being there personally in a uh, suit, I decided it's better to send a remote thing. Because it has the added benefit of being able to filter away the darn body parts. For the Rambot, you have to see your darn feet and hands and it's like super annoying. And with this thing, it's so much cleaner. So why are we here now again? Well, we're here to discuss kinetic APS shells in particular. Because they are pretty nice and uh, there are some different versions. You may know we have hollow point, we have sabot, we have um, heavy heads and we have armor piercing shells and all of them can be made into um, well kinetic uh, mixed with payload and they're, they're a little bit different and um, honestly a lot of people don't really understand their difference because I didn't until recently. It turns out I did misunderstand a crucial part about the Sabo heads. So in this little video we will go through the differences and explain them in detail. So before we do that we should uh, warp into the seat so we can control this gun. Um, here we have the shells. This is, is uh, my testing platform. Uh, of course, we're not using the full size. We have a um, well gauge of 210 um, and well, we have larger ammo clips than we need, but that's fine too. Um, and basically, this video is not going to be a lot about hollow point because hollow point and uh, kinetic penetrators are a little bit different. This video in particular will focus more on uh, penetrators. But uh, just to make things a little bit simple, uh, I should just explain hollow points a little bit quickly before this. So here we have our rod. This is a railgun setup just to make it simple. If we have our platform, hold Q, click designer mode, refill APS shells. This loads new shells into the design without us needing to go into like took in take it in and out of play because that's annoying. So uh, if we shoot the whole point shell it does spread out damage like this and if we go to this little stat here we can see we have max royal draw to 10 millimeters we set it up correctly we can see we have an expected thumb damage of 13,000. We now have a fairly quick shell 1600 meters per second um, which basically gives us an armor piercing value of 33. And that's kind of good. If this is kind of lower, what we can do is to add Sabo warhead bodies so it's closer to the surface we'll hit, like close to 40. So if we go here, we can now see um, it basically does the same ish damage, but uh, that's for this particular part. So if we look in here, we can see that uh, the thump damage is now 12,000, so it's lesser, but the armor pierce is higher. So basically, um, if I said anything else before, this is incorrect. Um, thump damage does not care about armor stacking. So if we look at this thing here, um, if we stack this, it has an armor class of 48, but when it's only one layer, it has an armor class of 40. And um, if I've said that armor stacking matters when it comes to hollow points, it doesn't. Um, as for armor stacking, thump, thump damage as well as uh, lasers only really care about the surface layer. So even this is metal stacked on top of each other, which has an armor class of uh, 48. It still has the armor class for the hollow point shell of 40 because that's the surface area. So, why did we add Sabo hoarded bodies? Well, to get it closer to 40, which is the surface you will most likely hit. If you, for example, will hit some other shell like uh, uh, Alloy, it has an armor of 35, 
uh, stone is 16, so basically like that. Um, we have we add some sabots to just get closer to the armor class because if we are below that, if we are a lot below that, we're dealing less uh, damage. Like a higher armor class does protect well. It kind of um, there is a nice equation for it, which is very simple, but not to get into equations. It's basically having an armor class that's close to the target makes you deal almost full damage. And having a uh, armor piercing value on this thing that is far below the armor class on the surface you're trying to hit, you will basically only deal a small fraction of the damage uh, that you would. However, it is a waste of everything to add like higher than the surface of the armor class you'll hit. So this is 40 and now we have 43. And this would basically mean that this yeah, we're, we're just dealing less damage. Because when we add it like that, we are dealing, we're, we're dealing damage against the surface for sure. Whoops. Um, but because we added so many sabots, which lower the kinetic damage, it's only 11,000 now, so it's slightly lesser. However, of course, um, this shell with more uh, sub warhead bodies could de deal more effective damage against, say, heavy armor or something like that. But in that case, it's also kind of weak. So in any case, uh, to not talk too much about this, which we're not covering in this video, I will just say like this. Think about the surface you'll hit. Hollow point only cares about the first layer. Try to undershoot the armor piercing value. So uh, actually, for this particular target, I would only go with solid warhead bodies because um, here we can see 13,000 damage and 33 armor piercing is kind of close to the thing we're trying to hit. Uh, and if we hit something, whoops, if we hit something that's weaker, like alloy, we'll de deal even more damage. So uh, basically undershoot the armor a little bit, try to get as close as possible, but you really want to deal a lot of kinetic damage too. So um, you don't have to be at the like armor level of the surface. So that's basically about that. And um, whoops, hollow point does not care about angles. Are you having angles? Well, they won't deflect. Shields will deflect them, but armor surfaces won't happen. They don't care. They just don't care about your angles. They deal the same damage anyways. So uh, that is about that hollow point. Um, but we are talking actually about kinetic penetrators in this little video. And that means we have different noses to choose from. We have heavy heads, we have armor piercing heads, and we have sabo heads. So what are the difference of this? Well, if we look at the value here, you can see that the heavy heads has a speed modifier of 1.45, and the same as hollow point. And the armor piercing head has 1.6, and the sabo head has also 1.6. Now this has an armor piercing modifier, as well as kinetic damage modifiers. So the armor piercing shell, it actually deals more damage to the target because uh, the sabot head has a kinetic damage modifier, which means uh, the presence of sabot heads as well as sabot warhead bodies will make the kinetic damage of your shell uh, like less. It scales it down. It also scales down the shell health, so you'll only get like 90% of the original shell health just by adding this sabot head. Um, and also deal less kinetic damage. However, armor piercing value modifier is 2.5 and the uh, armor piercing head has an armor piercing modifier of 1.65. So adding a sabot head drastically increases our armor piercing. So this is like 75 armor class, a lot of wasted uh, um, armor class for sure. So if we add that uh, against an armor piercing head, we have 52, which is much higher than what we shoot at. But anyways, so 
Then you might think, which I also thought before, that armor-piercing heads were just in general superior to sabo heads. Because they are just dealing more damage, they go the same speed, and there were a little text that I kind of misunderstood. So our friend from the Discord, Nemedes, Nemedes, did tell me about this and did some tests. So thanks to Nemedes, I can give you this little, um, what to say, intelligence update, um, new knowledge. So the Sabo head, you can see here, uh, reduces effective impact angle to 75%. I kind of took that as if we're hitting an angled surface with a sabo head, it will deal um, like less damage. And it's actually the opposite. Sabo heads are good at hitting angled um, areas and deals more damage against angled areas uh, than, for example, armor piercing. Now, what I thought before was that uh, Sabo heads had a higher chance of bouncing, and this is not the case. Uh, Sabo heads don't have a higher chance of bouncing. Uh, there is actually no difference at all. Um, so, what basically, it was just, I don't know, anecdotal evidence. I just thought that it looked like that. So if I said that before, that is indeed not correct. Um, sabo heads don't bounce more than armor piercing uh, or heavy heads. It's the same. Um, yeah, it's the same. It's just that text that made it a little bit confusing. So anyways, uh, let's do some tests to prove you these points and see what shell can be used when. So we'll begin with a heavy head. And the heavy head will have an armor piercing value of 28. So it's not, not, uh, not as high as the surface we're hitting. In this case, the surface we're hitting is 48 because it's stacked metal. Heavy heads care about stacked areas. So we can even slow down time here. And we can fire the shell. And we can see, wow, it went straight through. This heavy head just had a lot of kinetic damage, which made it go straight through. You can see it has a uh, expected kinetic damage of um, 27,000, which is a lot. So even though our armor um, piercing value is kind of below the armor class, but I just realized, um, I thought that was a little bit weird. We accidentally shot two shots. So, uh, shooting again, one shot, you can see here, we don't get through entirely. We go through the first two layers and damage this, uh, well, heavy armor piece. So if we just check this, well, 28, so a lot of the damage didn't like go through just because we're shooting at the surface, surface that's kind of, yeah, too strong. So what we could do is go in here and to this heavy head, just add a couple of Sabo warhead bodies. And of course you can see the uh, kinetic damage is going down, but we are approaching the surface area. And oh yes, so now we're very close. It's basically a Sabo rod with a heavy head. Kind of weird combo, but it works. So we update that. You can see the shell is now here. Shooting that. And because it does a lot less kinetic damage, um, well, but has a higher armor class, it still goes through equally far. So for this particular setup, it would actually be better to leave this with solid warhead bodies all the way with just heavy heads because the kinetic damage we do is kind of superior and like in the rare chance we didn't shoot at metal but instead alloy or wood or stone we would do a lot more damage than if we had um, an armor class that was much higher because remember if you are overshooting the armor class you don't get any benefits you just get uh, problems. It's just the weaker shell in general. You should never overshoot the armor class without a specific reason. You should always be below the armor class 
or at the armor class you intend to shoot at. So this would like be max 48, not more than 48, but actually the kinetic damage we gain from this is kind of good. So I would say like this, shooting with heavy heads, where do you, we use them? Well, heavy heads ha makes the same speed as hollow points. So mixing heavy heads and hollow points in one gun is very, very good, especially when you shoot against kind of soft targets. So if someone used a lot of stone, a lot of wood, maybe a lot of alloy, um, we can use heavy heads, uh, hollow points in a combination. And it's a great combination because the gun gets and doesn't get like different speeds. So if you're mixing like heavy heads and uh, armor piercing shells in one gun, the gun will be very confused. The targeting will be different because the shells speeds will be different and it will be very confusing. So when you're making shells, you need to make sure that the gun, uh, all the shells that are in the same gun, are basically the same speed. They have the same speed modifier. And you can see the speed here, expected muscle velocity, change this to a armor piercing, and now it's a lot faster. So you have to kind of keep, um, keep track of that. Right, so shooting against soft target in a mix with hollow point, that's super great for heavy heads. Another thing I would do with heavy heads is actually using the heavy head and then having some payload like uh, EMP or whatever and basically use that as a payload delivery system when you're shooting at soft targets. So the classical AP EMP, AP frag, you can use that with heavy heads. If you're shooting at softer targets, you might actually get further into the target with a heavy head just because the kinetic damage it has is superior. But um, if you're shooting at hard targets, which you usually will be doing, uh, delivering payloads with armor piercing is uh, the better choice. So uh, next, when I've, well, we've gone through the heavy head, well, let's move on to armor piercing. So uh, if we look at this shell, this armor piercing shell has an expected armor piercing value of 52. And this is overshooting it so much, but we don't have any Sabo warhead bodies, so we can't actually like decrease the armor piercing value here uh, by changing one of these to another type of solid. So the kinetic damage is now 17,000. And if you change that back to the heavy head, it's 27,000. So here you kind of see why you don't always want to go with armor piercing. The heavy head just has a great, like it actually, you can see on it, heavy head kinetic damage modifier. It almost doubles the kinetic damage modifier. So you deal a lot of kinetic damage with a heavy head. So that's why they're actually kind of good. Now the armor piercing shell, um, one thing that this is, does good is that it's faster and faster shells is hard to shoot down, right? Like incoming shells that are faster, harder to shoot down with lambs and stuff like that. So lambs will be less scary against the uh, armor piercing head. And uh, let's see if I did that. So let's shoot that. You can see that even though this armor piercing shell, and we did shoot the armor piercing shell, just check there. Um, it has not half, but a lot less damage than the heavy head, but it still deals as much damage. And that's because the armor class shooting at this board uh, basically makes it do full damage. It deals, it deals all of these 17,000 kinetic damage, while the heavy head didn't deal at all. It only dealt a fraction of it. So that's why they were going equally far. And this one is uh, faster. Regular armor piercing shells, they're really good too. They're, it's a solid shell. Um, what we can do, of course, to up the armor class, if we're shooting at a thing that's only um, heavy armor, we can add some sabots inside of here to make it deal even more damage. But that's mostly wasted damage potential because, you know, we're already 52 armor class, so uh, it's not very often uh, someone comes up with a heavy armor slab. Uh, and against the heavy armor, Sabo will be better. But the armor piercing is super good for one thing, and that's delivering payload. 
So if we add some, let's do some uh, high explosives. We can see here that the armor class in the low right corner is actually going down. So we can add a few, make sure it's not too, make sure it's not below 40. Uh, 45 should work against stacked metal. Um, 43, now we go down to, we, we already have like 40. But we're dealing, we're dealing, you can see we're dealing almost the same kinetic damage. And now we are at uh, 39. So we're dealing kind of the same kinetic damage. We have an armor class, so we should deal most of it. Might not get as far, but when this kinetic damage is spent, the uh, high explosive will activate. And uh, because solid warhead bodies, you can see they'll add to the speed a little bit because uh, the railgun picks it up and they're lighter uh, and the high explosive doesn't have a, a much, uh, as much draw, so it's kind of slower. That's also something to take into account when you're mixing shells. But here we can see we have an armor piercing high explosive. So let us just fire that. And we can see it penetrated almost all the way, didn't do much damage there, but inside of here we instead have an explosion that can be quite devastating indeed. So if we just check that again, shooting it, go through, bam, deals internal damage. We could have done that with EMP. Uh, super scary, if you use EMP we can AI dead a lot of, uh, a lot of enemy crafts in like a few shots. Actually, this is a great shell to have only diff gun, to be honest. <laughs> like early game changer. Uh, so, this is one of the best uses for armor piercing um, heads. We can mix them with other stuff and make a payload delivery systems. And we don't need a penetration depth fuse. Uh, because the, the stuff we're shooting at will probably just absorb the damage and make it detonate automatically inside. Uh, however... Then we also have the Sabo, and you might ask, if we had a Sabo, we can see, oh, not Sabo warhead body, <laughs> Sabo head. You can see that the armor pierce value, value uh, or armor piercing value is suddenly 60. Like, that's a lot. We just changed this thing. Uh, it doesn't deal a lot less kinetic damage. It's a, it's a bit less, but it's so much better armor piercing. And you might wonder, wow, then we can even add like more uh, heavy, well, heavy uh, high explosives here. Cool, great. Uh, the thing is, however, if we look at the Sabo head, you can see the presence of this head sets high explosive EMP frag flag damage to 25%. So that's the little caveat if you use Sabo heads, the payload which you deliver will be kind of weak. It will be kind of weak indeed. So let us uh, let us change this to actually sure I did. Whoops. Set this to Sabo head. We're doing EMP all the way. Refill. Oh, we can see right. It zapped this area. Very nice. Um, and went to a surge protector. Actually, I think I should probably remove the surge protectors here for this test. All right, shoot again, bam. It's now dealing with that, very nice. So uh, if we then instead change this to a armor piercing head, we now do less, uh, we do have much less armor piercing, but we of course have more uh, EMP strength. And we can see, wow, it took out like three times as much, four. And that's, well, that follows the values exactly. So, if you want to deliver a payload into your enemies, you should not use a Sabo head. Like, in some cases, you can of course use it if you need to deliver small EMP payloads inside a super hardcore armored target. Then sure, why not? But in general... Armor piercing um, noses are much better at this job than the Sabo noses.
Uh, and if you also mix in Sabo Warhead bodies, uh, you can see that it also makes sure that the uh, the uh, high explosive EMP frag flak uh, is set to 25%. So you can't really go around it. If you want to use Sabo, your payload will be less. So uh, now you might wonder then what is the reason of using Sabo? And as I said, in, uh, in the beginning of this little video, it's a lot better against angles. So let's activate this little thing here. We are now set at a, uh, a low degree. So let's fire it here. You can see, oh, I forgot to update the shell like that there. Now, we shot this sabo head straight through here, it hit an angle, and when you're hitting an angle, we can actually do like this, just to get some stats here. Uh, da -da -da -da. Damage debugging, projectile effects, yeah, perfect. So, what happened here? We went through here. And it went all there. How nice is that not? So it went basically all the way in here. And we can see if we can get... So if we, if we just go here in this uh, mouse middle mouse menu, you can see the first point here. Penetrated, okay. Um, AP uh, 79, right? So that's kind of high. And you can see the kinetic damage left here. So we of course have a lot more penetration capabilities than we actually need. So if we just do the test again, bong, we're going in here. We're going in a fair bit. Right, so we're hitting an angle and the first angle we're hitting actually kind of matters a little bit. Because when we're hitting an angle, uh, the uh, the damage is scaled. So if we hit a half slab, we're only dealing uh, like half. We're dealing a portion of the damage and the more extreme the angle is, the less damage proportion we're dealing. So having super angled armor makes you take a lot less kinetic damage basically. But with the sabo heads, we are basically when we're hitting this angle, it is basically seen as we would have hit a better angle. So the text about reduced to, uh, let's see here, impact angle to 25%, reduces effective impact angle to 75%, uh, basically means that it pretends or it's kind of counted as if you would have hit the surface at a better angle than you actually did. So we can just add a little, let's just add a little marker here. Should add it like, like that. So we kind of know how far it went. So we change this to an armor piercing head instead and update the shell and shoot the same thing again. We can remove that thing and fire, boom. So you can see now the kinetic damage we fired this time was actually a lot more. But when we hit that angle, we can see that because we hit it at an angle, we did less damage. Impact, 20, uh, 20, uh, 75 degrees impact angle, which basically makes the kinetic damage run out um, later on. Like when, when the shell passes through, the kinetic damage uh, is actually scaled down by the first surface we hit. So if we hit the first surface at an extreme angle, the following blocks will actually take um, like proportionally less damage. So even though this shell has more kinetic damage, it still doesn't go as far. And remember, both of these shells are heavily um, overshooting the armor piercing value needed, they're far above uh, 48. So the only difference in this little experiment 
is the angles. And this one didn't get through an extra beam there. So even though sabot heads may seem to be worse in many aspects, it is seen as if they're dealing um, a better angle. It's seen as if they come in at a better angle than they actually do. So if far again, here we can see now we shot the, the sabot. And if we look here, impact angle, it has the same angle, similar like speeds and just popping in there, but at an angle which basically makes the sabot go a bit further. So basically, if you want to use a bow shells, it can be great against angled enemies because you will be dealing more effective damage if your enemy has like extremely sloped angles. And the more sloped the, uh, the, the more sloped it is, the more difference it will be. So we can actually see here and see if do, 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 do. Let's see elevation. Can see if we can set it at like quite an extreme angle. Let's see. Let's see if is this possible. Yes, that should be possible. Okay. So make sure to update the shell. See here. This is a sabo head. It goes 1,807 meters per second. And you can see. Because it's an angle, well, of course, uh, it will affect sabot heads. It's not that they don't care about angles. But now you can see we didn't reach that far because, well, the angle is very extreme. So sabot heads care about angles. They do. They just don't care as much as other shells. Refill. So you can see here. Now we have the armor piercing shell. Fire that. Bam. And here you can see it didn't even get through to the other surface. Thanks to this angle, it really saved it. So that is, they have the same speeds too, as you can see, exactly same speeds. And yeah, this angle really saved this craft here. Can just check it again. Bam, didn't get, didn't get through. So that's basically the difference. Shooting at big angles, Sabo is your friend. Let's just try with a heavy head for fun here. Update the shells. Bam. And here we can see uh, the heavy head. Bam. It actually gets further in just because the in in insane amounts of kinetic damage kind of overshoots the well expected armor piercing value and the slower speeds and stuff like that. Higher speeds means better armor piercing and better kinetic damage, by the way. So there we can see, that's basically a difference. All the shells have their different uses and uh, yeah, hope you learned something new. Armor piercing, your best friend for delivering payloads. Um, Sabos, your best friends for dealing with heavily on angled surfaces, heavy heads, very good kinetic damage and with brute force kinetic damage you can get most you can get through most things and uh, they're especially good against soft targets of course so i hope you learned something new and if you did you should definitely consider leaving a little like on this video so other people can learn this too and if you really enjoyed this well you can also support me on Patreon, like the uh, commissioned officers in the army of Jimadism. Namely, Stellar Admiral LCG Canyon, Scooby Rocks, our captain, Commander Ejin, Lieutenant Asteria, and our new Lieutenant Powered by Greed. Thanks a lot for joining. And Cadet. Martin McBacon and Cadet Shark 93. So, thanks to our commissioned officers for supporting the channel. And of course, do subscribe to catch our future videos. This is your host, Jim Edesman, and we are signing out.